Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and I have nine more Dollar Tree Shore Living DIYs for you. So let's get crafting. The first DIY I wanted to do was like a starfish display box. Um, they have lots of different kinds. I'm going to use one that is an actual starfish that I got at my antique mall for $2.00. Just because I love it, I think it's pretty. But if you can't find that, you could always use one of these little starfish dish from the Dollar Tree, or maybe even the smaller one as well. You could probably repeat it too if you had more than one of them, but I wanna do like a display of four starfish. This one is actually a hook, but that's no big deal. We'll just take the hanger off the back by unscrewing a couple of little screws. And we have another a little variety of starfish. So this is my inspiration piece. I want them to look real like that, like bleached out like starfish. So that is the goal. Right now they're wood, ceramic, all different things. So I'm just gonna go in and paint them all ivory with some acrylic paint. It is gonna require several coats of acrylic paint to get good coverage on these, um, especially the ceramic ones. But if you were using a chalk paint, you might be able to get it all in one. But that one at the top there that I was just painting is my favorite, the one with all the texture on it. It's so pretty. But it, I'm not a big fan of the color of it, the blue. So I'm just gonna go over them until you really can't see any of the original ceramics like shining through. And I want them to kind of have that same like a matte finish that that real starfish has and cover up any writing or anything that was underneath of it. That one had some lines on it. Then I go in with some antique wax by Waverly and just kind of dry brush with a chunky brush very lightly, just pouncing all over the top of the starfish to give them a little bit of color and texture. And then just following that up with a baby wipe. I don't want to make them too dark because the original one is mostly ivory, but I did want to bring out a little bit of the texture on these, which is why we're distressing with that. And this one's got like tons of texture. So I kind of switched up to like a makeup sponge to try to pick up all that texture on that one. I thought that might work a little bit better for that one. And this one's got like a lot of raised areas too. So just wanna bring them out slightly, but I don't want them to be super brown like that. So I do go back in distress with my original ivory color, kind of all over to lighten those back up. And hopefully they look similar to my inspiration piece because they're all gonna be displayed together. I wanted it to look like a fun, like little starfish display, like you would see like at a, muse a shell museum or something. So I'm gonna use a four of these little wood boxes. They get these in every year. This year, um, my store has these with like the Mother's Day stuff, like as soon as you come in the store. But this is the larger size. You know, they usually have them nested. They have like three different sizes, I think. These are the big ones. I had to go to several Dollar Trees to get four big ones, but I definitely wanted four of them so I could display them all together. Now they have these little metal tabs on the front and the back. I don't remember them having them on both before, but maybe they did. So I'm just going on all of them and removing the metal pieces because that will get in the way when I go to build like a little shadow box with these. So I just remove all four of those. Super cute, I love these boxes. The only thing I don't really like is the unfinished wood on the very front of those, but I'll show you how I deal with that. And they do have a pretty wood background, but I want it to be burlap behind the starfish. So I'm gonna use um, one of these little burlap bags from the Dollar Tree. You could always use some of their burlap they have now at Dollar Tree. They have the big fabric rolls, they have the smaller like ribbon rolls, 
I really like crafting with these bags though because they have like a plastic coating on the back which makes them really easy to cut without fraying. So I just cut the front and the back off of the bag so I would have like some sheets that I could kind of cut down to size. And one bag is definitely enough to go over the back of all four signs. I kind of cut down three sides like um, pretty good and then just kind of put an ink pen in there to kind of figure out my size on these. And if they don't fit, you always might need to trim them down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and try to cut some multiple at a time here. Probably can't do all of them, but just using one as reference, cutting those down, I just need four little pieces of a burlap. And this turned out really good. I wasn't sure because my starfish were all kind of different shapes and sizes, but it kind of works for it. It kind of makes it look cool. So there's our four pieces of a burlap. Trying to get them all trimmed down about the same size. And then we can just attach those to the back. If you wanted to leave the wood back there, it'd be really pretty too, but I really love the burlap behind like starfish, seashells, any of the bleached sea creatures. I think it looks really coastal and fun. And it's just another little texture. So I just put down a rather thick layer of Mod Podge and glue that to the back. Kind of smoothing that down with a baby wipe that can kind of wipe off any excess glue that seeps out. It, it does dry clear so you don't have to worry about it too much. But um, I used a rather thick layer just because this does have that plastic lining on the back. I wanted to make sure that it was secure. So... We're just gonna go around and Mod Podge the back to all of these. I thought it would be easier to do this at this point before I get my little shadow box all put together. And I made this where I could display it a couple different ways. Um, you're gonna be able to like stand it on its side if you wanna display it on a shelf. But I also attach a hanger to the back of it so that I can hang it on a wall if I change my mind. It's definitely something coastal and fun that I can use probably in any of the rooms in my house. I think I have a coastal theme in every room now. <laughs> and I'm working on decorating my Florida room, but my first piece I put out there fell off. We've been having some really terrible storms, lots of tornadoes and stuff like that in the area, but very high winds and... Man, I guess I'm going to have to like drill the art pieces into the actual side of my house. So this is how I deal with the front of these little boxes. I just use a makeup sponge and some acrylic paint that I just painted this very light beachy blue. And I'm just going to go over the very front. I don't want like full coverage. I want some of that brown wood showing through because it's going to give it kind of a little bit of a distressed feel. Just making sure I don't get any bleeding along the inside or the outside with those as well. But super easy and it adds a little touch of color to the piece as well. Now to attach them together, I'm simply going to use hot glue. They are very square and the same size, so they match up really well. You could always use wood glue if you'd like, but I use the Gorilla Glue um, hot glue and I seem to have pretty good luck. And I'm going to do the same thing here with the other two. So we have two of the two boxes and then we can put them together by gluing them together with more hot glue and see how square they are. You don't really have to use any clamps or anything. Um, just got to give your hot glue a little bit of time to set up. And there is our shadow box. It's a perfect display for these little starfish. I'm going to kind of Fill up the boxes with these, kind of like spread them out, see what I kind of like wear. Doesn't really matter. Super cute. And now I'm just going to simply hot glue these to the burlap. Isn't this original starfish really pretty? There's this um, coastal store in my antique mall that sells tons of shells and stuff like that. And uh, I usually cannot afford most of the things they have because they're already like built or put together. But for their starfish and their like 
shells and stuff like that. Really good value. $2 for that little starfish. And this is the white ceramic one, or it was white ceramic before, that we painted ivory. And this one was the little wood one on the hook. And just gonna simply hot glue all of those down. That one's a little smaller, so I kind of center him in there. And my favorite one, this one used to be the blue one, just with a bead of hot glue all around the edges to make sure these stay in there. And isn't this a fun little coastal project? I think it's so cute. It would look good, I think, with any kind of coastal or summer decor. And that is how it can stand up on its own. Pretty good. I just wanted it to be versatile. And I have a lot of those little sawtooth hangers left over from the Dollar Tree canvases that we've been using for DIYs. So I'm just gonna pop one of those on the back as well. So there is our little starfish display box. I love it and I think I can display this year round in my home. And this would be really cute too. If you, you didn't have to do all starfish, you could also mix in some sand dollars or large seashells, whatever you've got. But I kind of like the idea of it being a different kinds of starfish. Okay, next DIY, you guys have been asking me to come up with something for the mermaid wreath tail. So I'm gonna make this actually for my Florida room. So I wanna do it fun. I, I found this great burlap at the Shore Living Line too, which is the mermaid scale. So, hey, it only makes sense to add some mermaid scales to my mermaid tail, right? Now, I was worried about like kind of smoothing this out, getting all the wrinkles out on it. And I, I actually um, end up putting these on upside down and I don't notice it until I'm completely done with the project. So. Don't call me out. I realized it. I realized it, but too late. <laughs> but that's okay, because I'm going to hang my mermaid tail upside down anyway. So I don't think anybody's really going to be able to notice it. But this is right here is where I should have stopped. Because see, the fish scales should have technically went the other way. But that's okay. We all make mistakes, right? So I'm going to cut out a little bit smaller of a piece here. And I ironed out all the wrinkles just to make it easier to work with. And then I won't have any wrinkles in the final project. And then just simply hot gluing that to the top um, with a little extra left because I can always trim down any extra fabric when we're done, done making this. Now it does like cave in quite a bit there um, inside the tail, but this fabric is flexible enough that you can kind of do that downward curve with it. So I'm just gluing it onto the squiggly lines, also then gluing it to the sides. Now I've used burlap behind wire reforms like this at the Dollar Tree before. Usually I just go in from the front with some rope and you know, it, 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 the glue kind of comes down and catches the fabric. But since I'm needing to do like this concave shape inside there, I really kind of had to do this as a separate step. So. Just kind of working one section at a time. I just add hot glue all over the wire. I don't want to use too much because I don't want you to be able to see it in the final product, but pretty easy. Just smoothing it down there inside the tail. Now I'm going to do something different for the tail fin. So that is probably good right there. And I can start cutting some of the extra fabric away. Now you're gonna have a little bit of a hot glue mess. You can usually take care of that with a little bit of heat from a heat gun or a blow dryer. But I'm gonna go ahead and start trimming this up. This area at the bottom was a little tricky um, where it comes to the tail fin right there. Um, getting that covered and glued down. But I'm just gonna give it like a trim just as close as I can get to the side of the wire. I will be covering the wire, um, so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I do want it catching. Now, this was my plan for the tail. I found some of this glitter cardstock at the Dollar Tree, 
And it's that same beautiful color of teal. I think this is going to look perfect in my floor to room. I was a little worried because it's paper, but it's super glossy on the back and glitter on the other side. And I'm going to be hanging it on a wall that like won't get wet or anything like that. So I think it's going to work. It's heavier duty, duty than I thought it would be. So I just turned that over and I'm just going to trace out the shape of the little mermaid tail fin on to the glitter paper. You could always use some of the sequins if you can find some. I already used all of my teal sequins. Um, I've been finding that at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree. That would be really cute too. Or some of their glitter vinyl would work too if you want to do a sparkly tail. When I get, once I get it cut down to size, I'm going to just simply put hot glue all over all of the wires of the reform, trying to act quickly so my hot glue does not set up before I get it on there. And then just glue that on. I don't really want any of that to be hanging over too much, but just like the fabric a little bit because we're going to be covering all the wire parts of this with just some Dollar Tree rope. This is the one that I ended up using, uh, the white one that is a little bit thinner. I think this is the 11 foot white nautical rope from the Dollar Tree. And it did a good job. At first I thought about using the brown rope, but I thought it would kind of match in with the burlap a little bit too much. And I wanted a little bit of a contrast, which is why I went with the white, but I'm sure it'd be cute either way. If you guys recreate this, you'll have to be sure to share it with me and others in my Facebook group. I always love seeing what you guys come up with. You guys are so creative. So I'm gonna start with just the squiggly lines on the tail gluing that on and then cutting it off once I get to the end because I will be eventually going around the whole thing with rope. So I wanna cut it a little bit short so I have room for the rope on the sides. But we're just gonna do that all the way down with the little squiggly lines, kinda of just working one section at a time. And that's why I went with the skinnier white rope instead of the thicker is because I thought it would be easier to get around all of these little squiggles right here. And, you know, I know a lot of people have done this mermaid wreath form with like the deco mesh and they do have the shore living deco mesh if that's your thing. I'm just not a big fan of the deco mesh. I don't really like working with it. I don't really like how it, how it looks in the end. Just not a fan. So I always try to find a little bit different method to deal with these little wire wreath forms. And this was really fun and cute. And I have a couple of these, so I'll have to try to do several different versions of mermaid tails for you guys. I was thinking about putting two back to back and you kind of have a 3D tail. That would be really cute if you needed it for like a tail decoration or something. And my camera died right there, but all I did was just glue a piece onto each one of the stripes of the tail fin. And now we can just start doing the outside. I thought about switching up to the thicker rope for the outer, but I decided this looked pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the same skinnier white rope that we've been using before and just gluing it right on top of the wire reform, which is gonna hide that. I know some people like to um, leave the wire exposed, but especially with the hot glue that I had to use to attach the things to the back, I really kind of want to cover that up and the rope gives another fun beachy coastal touch to this DIY. So just finishing up this last side and then I can just cut and glue down the final corner. Now the only part of the wire reform that still needs to be covered is that little part like between the fin and the tail. So I'm just gonna cut a little piece for that this one was a little tricky to get it in there, but we're gonna make it work. Just kind of going over that original like curved shape there. Now all I need is a hanger. So I'm just gonna cut some twine. Um, this is just some Dollar Tree pretty twine, but I'm just gonna tie a knot and just make a simple loop hanger for one side of the tail fin. That way it will hang cool kind of to the side and upside down. And maybe I'll get away with those upside down mermaid tail scales, right? 
I didn't notice it until the next day. And then I was like, oh my goodness, I put those on upside down. So silly. And let me show you how this looks. Here is our little mermaid tail with the glitter cardstock for the tail fin and the mermaid or fish scales for the mermaid tail. And this is how I'm gonna hang it out in my Florida room. I think it'll look really cute out there and I love the colors. Okay, another DIY I'm gonna make for outdoors, my Florida room, but you could totally use it inside too, is to use one of the Shore Living Garden flags. I think this one's so pretty. It says relax, has a little beach scene with the Adirondack chairs, flip flops and such. Now I wanna make mine into a permanent sign not just a flag that's gonna fly all over the place. I wanted something that looked a little bit more high end. Now I'm gonna use four of the wall shelves from the Dollar Tree to make a big slatted sign. It's gonna be a little bit too long, but I'm gonna show you how you can make it work without trying to cut it down or anything. So it's folded right perfectly in half. So I just took advantage of that seam and cut the garden flag in half. I always say that I'm gonna DIY with these garden flags when I buy them, and I never do. So I'm proud of myself for following through on this because it turned out so cute. So these are the wall shelves that I'm gonna use. The width is gonna be just about perfect for these, but again, they're gonna be a little too tall, but that's okay. We are gonna be able to make it work, I think. I love these because these are basically just good craft wood, cut down perfect sizes. So if I do like my bottom half up against this one, I'm just gonna have to use ribbon or something to cover the very bottom of it. I know sometimes you guys don't have access to a saw and can't cut. So I kind of wanted to give you an option of when these things are not quite the right size you need, um, little things you can do to still make it work. So going over the entire shelf with a layer of Mod Podge, and then I'm just gonna lay my half of my flag on there. This is the bottom half, smoothing that out. And I want the Mod Podge to come through the fabric. So I'm just gonna kind of spread that out with like a baby wipe all over. And as you can see, the width is almost perfect for that little garden flag. I want it to be like a slatted sign with the four individual signs all together. So I'm gonna give it a quick dry here with my heat gun, and then I'm gonna cut the fabric off that we can use on the next shelf. So it was super easy to cut. I'm just using a razor blade from Dollar Tree and a cutting mat, and it was just so easy to cut through and it didn't fray or anything like that. So it was actually really easy to work with. I really like this DIY so much that I went back and bought another version of this flag because now I wanna try something else with it. So this is gonna be the very bottom. So I'm only going to do Mod Podge on like two thirds of it because that's all that I have left of my little garden flag. And I set that on there. I'm not going all the way to the edge. If I have a little bit of wood showing, I think that's fine. And just smoothing that out so the Mod Podge goes through that too to keep it nice and glued down. Just kind of centering it on there. It does have that like sewn seam on the bottom, but that's okay. We're gonna be covering that area anyway. So that will finish that all off anyway. Here is the top half of the garden flag that we cut off. And I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on the bottom half. I'm gonna start with the halfway point there do a layer of Mod Podge all over my little wood shelf and lay that on there, gluing that down. Isn't that scene beautiful? I thought about just using this as a garden flag in my landscaping. I might have to go back and get another one, it's so cute. But this is gonna look great, I think, out in my Florida room. And I think it's gonna really go, I'm trying to make it, I have a lot of like um, light blue curtains out there tropical furniture cover. So um, I really wanna go with a fun beachy vibe out there for the summer. And so I just cut off that once I get it dry like I did the other one and we have one more sign left here. I'm just gonna cut the hanger off, pull the little plastic piece out of the flag and Mod Podge two thirds of that sign to the top of the flag as well. 
just centering that on there and leaving a little bit of the border as well. I did have to add a little bit more Mod Podge to the top there because you had a couple layers of fabric. I don't want to cut any of that down. I'm just going to leave it all on there all together. Okay, we have our four pieces of our little relaxed beach sign. And I thought burlap would look really cute because it's going to be coastal. So this is that wired burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. And I really like that color. It kind of reminds me of sand. I think that's going to work well. The only thing is you can see through it. And you can see the flag through it as opposed to like the raw wood on the shelf sign. So I am going to do a little bit of painting here. Um, I'm going to paint the shelf and the like very top of the flag white so that when you can see through the burlap, it's going to look a little bit better and a little bit more uniform. Otherwise, you could double up your burlap maybe so that you couldn't see through it as much. But I think this is going to work. So I just need the top and the bottom. I'm going to do the same thing here. I about know how big my ribbon is and how much I need to cover basically just the seam of this one. Painted white. I think that's going to work. So I'm going to dry that paint and then we can go ahead and attach our ribbon to it. Which was a pretty easy. I'm just trying to cut a straight edge there on my ribbon to start with and cut that down to size. Just by laying it on there to see how big I need it. And I was trying to determine if I should hot glue it, but I thought the hot glue might go through the ribbon and not look very pretty. So I just do a thick layer of Mod Podge. <laughs> I did find that it didn't want to stick too well. So I do go over the top of it with more Mod Podge. It's going to dry clear, so it will look fine in the end, but I wanted to make sure that this definitely stayed down. Now, there's still kind of a little bit of a seam there. And to break it up, I thought I would also use some of the Shore Living ribbon. This one is the Starfish one. I think that's going to look really cute on there and provide another little decorative touch. I do end up using hot glue there for the very edge to make sure it stays in place. It was a little loose. And then I hot glue down this ribbon. And that worked just fine. And I think that's a nice contrast with the design here. And it definitely took care of the top and the bottom of this sign being too big. So just on the bottom, same thing. We're going to cut the burlap ribbon down, Mod Podge it on. Also Mod Podging over the top. To get it good and wet so we can glue that down. And then I'm going to go back and attach some of that short living ribbon to it as well. So I hot glue the little lip on top of my flag and some starfish ribbon to finish it off. Now all we have to do is put all of these four little shelf signs together to create one big slatted sign. And I thought the easiest thing for that would be just use some of the twine or rope that came with the shelves and we can attach it all together. So I'm just going to flip over all of my pieces. I kind of want to leave like a little bit of space in between each sign. So I'm kind of trying to measure that out a little bit. Like that and then take one of those twine pieces that came with the shelves. I'm just going to tie a knot in the end of mine. And using my staple gun, I'm just going to start stapling that on all of my signs. I wanted to make sure those were thick enough for my staples, and they totally are. So we're going to go with this. So I'm just going to leave a little space using two staples on each sign until I get to the top. I'm going to leave that same piece from the hanger, right? Kind of measure out how big I need. And then just start stapling that same rope down the other side, kind of everywhere where they had a hole originally. I am stapling that down. And then at the very bottom, I will tie a knot to secure that. So easy and functional. And here is our little relaxed garden flag sign. 
I think it looks so cute. I think it'll hold up well outside because it's made out of that garden flag material. And let me show you how it looks hanging up. Isn't it beachy and cute? I just love the scene and I love all of the colors. I hope you like it too. It makes me want to go to the beach, which was on my agenda today. And it didn't happen because I got stuck working and that's no good. <laughs> okay, next DIY. This is going to be two DIYs. We're going to do a starfish and a shell stepping stone DIY. Now, I know a lot of you guys have been asking what to do with these and I have been brainstorming. I wanted something to make a frame with and I couldn't figure out anything that was going to work that would be strong enough to hang a stepping stone to a wall but I figured out these would be perfect. The little two pack of the small wire wreath forms from the Dollar Tree upside down would form a perfect frame that we could attach to the shell, to the, to the little um, stones. Um, I was really worried that nothing would work um, and I wanted something that would be easy to hang and it's gonna frame it out. So. I'm going to disguise all of the wire on there with Dollar Tree brown rope. I just kind of start here on the middle one. You could always do the back one if you wanted. I kind of skipped that one. It's going to be kind of under the stepping stone. And just gluing that around the wreath form. We're going to get all the way around. And then we're just going to keep going with that same piece of Dollar Tree rope. And it doesn't really matter which size, I don't think, of the brown rope that you use, whatever you've got. And I'm just using a whole package. Can't remember which one this is. I think this might be the thicker one. And I am going all the way around. When I get to the edges, I'm gonna kind of like overlap it to the bottom part of the wreath a little bit, just to cover up the wire. So you can't really see it on the sides, but I'm just gonna go ahead and use the whole piece of rope. And we have a little rope frame for these. I was thinking, you know, gosh, I can make a table out of them, but it wouldn't be a very smooth surface. I have been brainstorming because I found a bunch of these little stepping stones at my Dollar Tree with the Shore Living line, but I could not think of what to do with them besides using them as stepping stones. Um, some of you guys have said that you use them like sitting them in like large plants on your patio. That would be super cute too. And I also picked up some because I thought we could also use them on like a beach or a coastal tear tray because they're not too big. So I'm just going to do the same exact thing here with the other little wreath form. And those were a great value because you get two of them for $1.25 at Dollar Tree. And I'm going to do the same thing. I just started on the middle wire going to use the entire rope, kind of sandwiching the bottom layer around to kind of cover up the wire from the side. And I'm going to actually just hang mine with the wire reform um, on the wall, but you could always attach a hanger at this point too when you've still got like exposed wire there. I was thinking about even wiring down these, but they're not that heavy. So I think this is gonna work because I've got lots of rope and wire that I can attach the stepping stone to. So I'm just using hot glue and going over the rope and the wire, pushing that down inside the little rope frame. It's the perfect size and the rope kind of comes up around the edges since I used it upside down, remember? Um, to kind of perform, like it kind of provides like a little bowl to sit the little stone down into. Just trying to clean up a little bit of my hot glue mess here on the back. But I think that's going to work. It seems really sturdy. So we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here with the other one. I think these are so cute. The starfish and the seashell. I love the colors. And I like the way that they look with the brown rope as well. So gonna hot glue this one to the wire and the rope as well. Trying to clean up any extra hot glue we have there. Now I do wanna kind of make the back look a little bit better than that. And I thought if I added something to the back, I could maybe make it even more secure because I definitely don't want these falling apart. Haven't decided if I'm gonna use these indoor or outdoor. 
So I'm just going to use some of the Dollar Tree burlap uh, that they have in the Shore Living line right now and just cut out like two pieces and that'll be large enough for the back of each one of these little stepping stone pieces. And then I'm just going to hot glue that on the back. So I'm going to hot glue it to the rope, the wire, and the stone. Kind of securing everything together, but also giving it a more finished back. And you know, I said I was going to use the wire wreath form to hang it. I still am able to do that through the burlap. It was really no problem at all. Had a very strong structure. But again, you could um, put a hanger on there if you wanted to. Twine would work really well if you wanted to do a loop. Once I got them all glued down, I just used my scissors to trim that off. I don't want any of that burlap to really be visible from the front. So I try to go as close to the rope as I can and making sure it is all good and secure. And it doesn't have to look perfect. It is the back, but I think that is gonna serve a purpose, help secure them in the little rope frames. And I think this was a good solution. What do you guys think about our little stepping stones that you can hang on a wall now? Actually, they'd be really cute to display like that kind of anywhere. And here is the, the little starfish in the wreath form made out of rope. And I was really happy that I found something the right size because even like the small wood signs and stuff like that that they had at the Dollar Tree, everything was a little bit too big. And I really didn't want to just glue it to something. I kind of wanted to glue it in something with sides like this. So here is the little blue seashell one. The colors are perfect on these. I don't think they really need any painting or anything. I think they're ready to go for a coastal decor. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about my Facebook group. I have a link below. I would love to see what you're working on. And I always post on there when I post new videos. I also have a Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. And I would love to see you over on any of those. Okay, this DIY is gonna be so easy. We're gonna use a shore living glass sticker, that beautiful seahorse, and then this beautiful beachy blue candle. This is just one of the tall candles they have all the time at Dollar Tree. I love this color though. When you peel off the plastic, it does leave like a really sticky adhesive. So I always like to use a little bit of goo gone on that, but then you kind of have to cl clean the glue, the, the glue gone off so that you can secure the sticker to it. But these glass stickers are so fun and it's perfect for a glass candle, right? I'm just gonna use the seahorse itself. I think the colors are so pretty on it. It's the perfect size for one of these long candles and just peel and stick the glass sticker on there. I'm trying to get it on there right the first time because I don't really want to weaken the adhesive on the sticker. And then I wanted to give it like a little bit of a coastal touch in addition. And so I found this at the Dollar Tree the other day. It is like a macrame cotton rope. And I like it because it's like kind of the same kind of color and feel as the white rope from Dollar Tree, but on a much smaller scale. And I thought that would look really cute wrapped around it, the candle, kind of like you would do with twine, but this time with a little white rope. So I just start in the back here of my candle and hot glue that macrame rope to it. And we're just gonna go around several times until I think it looks good. And you don't have to worry about like, you can light this candle because it's all secure in a jar. I am gonna go ahead and put some of this macrame rope on the top as well. But since I'm securing it to the side of the jar, it's not like um, it's gonna catch on fire or anything, I don't think. So I hope not. <laughs> We're gonna glue that here at the top, kind of down a little bit, just to kind of cover the very top of the candle. These candles aren't always the most beautiful on the sides. I always try to pick out kind of the best side for the front whenever I'm DIYing with them. And I go around this one about the same, I think four times. And I thought that just provided another little coastal touch to this quick and easy shore living 
DIY. Aren't those colors so pretty together? Here is our little seahorse shore living candle DIY. That is my last one of him. He was kind of hard to find at my Dollar Trees, but he's so pretty. I see why everybody wanted him. Okay, next DIY. One of y'all told me that they also have the burlap stretch canvases in the 8x10. And I went to Dollar Tree last night and I found a whole case of them. And I swear I only bought half of it, but I wanted to buy the whole thing. <laughs> so I picked up that and an 8x10 frame from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which one, because we're going to paint it. But I thought we could make a very quick, easy, short living DIY with that little sailboat wall charm from the Dollar Tree. Anytime you do burlap with like white on it, I love that for a coastal feel. So I just take apart the frame, pop out the glass. We're definitely not going to need that for this. I want the bumpy texture of the burlap. And I love that there are standard sizes to go in picture frames. So I just mix Caribbean blue and white together to give me a very light beachy blue. And I'm just going over this gray frame all over to make a coastal frame for it. Anytime I can frame like a canvas, I always like it better. I'm a big fan of these new burlap canvases. My last, one of my last videos, I um, crafted with the five by seven one, the small ones. I have a bunch of those as well, but I was really excited to find the eight by tens. So I'm also going to go around the edges. This doesn't really have an inside lip on the frame, so it's super easy to paint. I'm okay if a little bit of the gray shows through because it'll add to the distress a little bit, but I do really want it to be nice and blue. So I do go over the front of it with another coat. Now I wanted to stress it to make it look, you know, coastal farmhouse. So I take a little white and a chunky brush and we're going to do a very light distress all over just to kind of break up some of the blue. Give it that coastal farmhouse charm. Super easy to paint. Definitely, I picked up some more of these frames today because I'm sure I'm going to need them for all of those burlap canvases that I bought. So here is the 8x10 burlap canvas. I like these so much better than the regular canvases because I hardly ever use those for anything. But burlap is right up my alley. So it fits in there perfectly. I'm going to try it on to see if it fits. Just trying to make sure that the paint was dry. I didn't want to mess anything up. Now, I didn't really take the staples out of this, um, but you totally could if you wanted to get them out of the way. They weren't really in the way for me, so I just kind of left them in there, just standing straight up. But the burlap isn't going to stay in there, so I just do a small bead of hot glue all around the inside, the edges where the glass would normally sit. And just pop our little burlap frame in there. I said they were in my way and then the staples were like a little bit in my way. You might want to pop them out. It might make your job a little bit easier. But super lightweight, the burlap frame and this frame. So I don't think that's going to be very heavy at all. And then I wanted to attach a little wall charm. These are so cute. This is the white sailboat one. They also have like, I think the seashell one I've crafted with. I love them. I don't really need the tassel and all the wood beads though. So I'm just going to use some pliers and pop that off. And it's just going to leave me with a really cute white sailboat that's like lightly distressed with like a little bit of wood showing through. So I thought that'd be really cute displayed against the burlap. Very simple, just like a silhouette, right? And so I'm going to use hot glue to glue that on to the burlap. Kind of centering it right in between. I think that looks really good. I was thinking about you could put the back back on it 
If you wanted it to stand up, you might want to paint it first though, before you put it on there, because it might be a little bit dark. But I decided just to use one of those soft tooth hangers that I have left over from the canvases and just put that in the back of the actual canvas. And I can just use that to hang it. It can be all open in the back like that. And this is how it turned out. Our little burlap canvas with a little shore living wall charm on there of the little sailboat. You could also like paint like seahorse, a boat, any kind of coastal thing on that burlap with a stencil or something and it would be super easy as well. Okay, next DIY, I wanted to do something with a shore living garden stake and I found this great like directional arrow one and I thought we could make a cute little sign. I don't really like the colors, but I thought we could make it our own. So I'm gonna use one of these little, I love these little signs from the Dollar Tree. A round one would be the perfect size for that little yard stake. It was cut a little crazy. So I'm just giving it a quick sand for the frame. And I, I like the ivory frame. I don't think I really need the wood bead hanger on this one. I think it might be a little too much. So I just go ahead and cut that off. I just wanna make a cute little kind of nautical sign with the directional arrows, but I wanna do it like coastal beachy colors, right? And I don't have like any blue burlap, but that's kind of what I was thinking was I wanted like a beachy blue burlap. So I don't have it, so let's make it. I picked up some of these tote bags at Dollar Tree. I actually liked them so much. I think I ordered a whole case of them and had them shipped to my store for free. But I have been able to find them recently at the stores. And I'm just going to cut off the front of one of the bags to give me a sheet of that white fabric. It's not burlap per se, but it's got a nice texture. And then I just lay that on top of the actual sign. And then I'm using an ink pen to draw out the shape, trying to hold it in place. So I'll know where to cut it. It's not gonna have to be a perfect cut around the edges because I do plan to put some Dollar Tree rope there. So if we can get it like relatively close, I think that's gonna work. So I draw that on there and then I'm just gonna simply uh, cut this bag out to size. This is the first time I think I've crafted with this fabric, but big fan. It cut really well. I like the fact that it was a little bit transparent, kind of made it easier to work with because I could see through it a little bit. I think that's gonna fit in there nicely for a blue background. You could always paint the wood back there blue too. I just kind of wanted a texture of a blue fabric. So now that we have it all cut out, I'm gonna paint it by mixing curvy and blue with white to give myself that really light beachy blue that I love to craft with. And then we're just gonna simply paint the fabric. Kind of going all over, making sure it is good and saturated all the way through with the blue paint. And like, I'm not using chalk paint, I'm just using cheap acrylic paint. And it actually it did a really good job on this. Gonna start drying that with my heat gun. I also kind of go over it with a baby wipe to kind of um, suck up any excess paint that I might not need and kind of smooth it all out. But that's how it turned out, our little blue fabric background for this. Now this is the yard stake, or the garden stake, and I was a little worried because it's attached to the letter and to the little compass star on there. But I just kind of use some pliers and kind of rock it back and forth. Now, maybe I should have been a little bit more careful because I did kind of mutilate my star um, and this was the only one I had, so, but we're gonna make it work. I use some pliers to try to like straighten it out a little bit, but there is a small hole in it, but that's okay. It's gonna add to the charm, right? <laughs> I do attempt to repair it with a little bit of spackle. When choosing spackle on metal is always kind of a hit or a miss, but I thought I could kind of at least fill in the hole because I'm gonna paint this anyway. I wanted to do like a white on blue design with this. So I'm gonna paint this white. So using spackle on it first is no big deal. I got it as good as I'm gonna get it. And then I'm just gonna go over the whole thing with ivory. 
And you could spray paint this as well, like ivory or white. It'd be really easy to do. I was wanting quickness and in our humidity here, the, the spray paint doesn't always dry quickly. So I go over it with one coat. That's about how good coverage you can get with one coat of ivory. So definitely gonna need a, another coat all over to cover up that blue that it was before. And if you like that blue color, you could always do something with that too, putting it on like a contrasting color background or maybe even using some of the Shore Living fabric as a background too. I just wanted the light blue and like ivory combination because the frame of that original sign is ivory too. I thought it would work well together. So here is our original sign. Here is our blue fabric. Did fray a tiny bit, but that's okay. I'm gonna cover up the edges again, but I am gonna just trim off any extra strings that I can. And we're just gonna attach this to the back of that sign with a layer of Mod Podge. I go fairly thick, so it'll kind of seep all the way through the fabric, gluing that in place. I'm gonna be gluing that yard stake to the front of that, so I wanna make sure that everything is good and secure. I kind of smooth that all out with a baby wipe, spreading out all the Mod Podge, cleaning up any of the excess, and give that a quick dry with my heat gun. Now it does have slats in it, so I decided to kind of go with that and kind of cut the fabric with my razor blade into the little slats. I don't know if I really cut through the fabric, but at least it kind of pushed it down into the little seams to kind of make it look like slatted board anyway. Just another little, little texture to the project. I thought might as well, it's already like that. And then using some of the white nautical rope, I think this is the thinner 11 foot. I'm just gonna glue that at the border between the frame and the fabric we cut out. It's gonna give another little coastal or nautical touch to this and it definitely goes with the color scheme. So just kind of one section at a time and we'll have the seam be right here at the bottom. And I really like how the colors turn out on this. I think that I, anytime you can do like an ivory or a white against the blue, I think it looks so beachy and fun. And I haven't decided, I think I might use this in, indoors. I did need something to glue it to though, because like the star kind of sits up a little bit. So I'm just cutting down like a Jenga block from the Dollar Tree a little bit with my miter scissors. And I always have those linked in my Amazon shop below. I love those things. And then we can glue the little like compass star to it. Now I learned my lesson with the metal yard stake that we used in a previous DIY, the octopus. I used hot glue, it totally did not work with the metal. So I'm using Dollar Tree super glue, but with a tiny bit of hot glue in the middle, just to get us started, trying to keep the two different kinds of glue separated. And then I just sit the metal yard stake on top of the Jenga block. And you just have to give it a little bit of time to dry when you're working with the super glue versus the hot glue. But that totally fixed my octopus when I went to fix it. So I thought I would make this one a little smarter. Now we cut the original hanger off. So I'm gonna use, I have a million of these sawtooths now from all of the canvas DIYs we've done. I'm just going to hammer one into the back of the sign because I didn't really want like a big frilly hanger on this with the wood beads. I just wanted something very simple. And this is how it turned out. I think it's really cute. What do you guys think? Just another fun way to DIY with these little yard stakes from the Dollar Tree. But definitely be careful taking them off the wire so you don't end up with a bent and star like vine, but that's okay. We made it work. Okay, are you ready for another Shore Living DIY? This one's gonna be really fun. We're gonna use some of this Shore Living white burlap from the Dollar Tree and a Dollar Tree sign. I love these signs. I chose the dark wood one because I wanted the contrast behind the white burlap. I thought that would look cool. And it's got the light wood frame. You could hang this like, you know, up and down or sideways. They have hangers on both. And these are great value, I think, for $1.25. 
What I want to do is I want to cover the back of the side with this white burlap from Dollar Tree. So I just kind of cut it down bigger than I need and give it a quick iron with my easy press to kind of get the wrinkles out because the way that that they this burlap is rolled up the wrinkles do kind of provide um, prove to be an issue when you're trying to measure something get it straight i want to cut this down like a perfect size to fit on that frame i also wanted it to be a little bit stiffer so that it would be easier to cut with and stuff um so I'm actually going to starch it a little bit while I'm ironing it because I thought that would help and it totally did. So I'm just going to spray on some heavy starch to the burlap and then iron it some more. It made it easier to cut. I know some of you guys have said that if you Mod Podge and dry it first, it's going to be easier to cut and less fraying. I kind of want a tiny bit of fraying on this. So I thought I would try starch to see if it worked and it actually worked well. This first one was kind of cut, this first side was kind of cut straight already. And then I'm just using the grain of the burlap to cut another straight edge like that. And I just pull off the very first line to make a slight fray along the bottom. Then I kind of measure and see where I need to cut. And again, just using that grain. Now that it's now ironed and starched, it's really easy to follow along that straight line. And then again, just pull a string out for a slight fray. So we've got three sides of this done and do the same thing here with the fourth side. Now with this Shore Living white burlap, I wanted to do a fun like coastal beachy display, kind of like something that you would see like at a museum or like a um, shell museum or something like that. So I'm gonna go over the entire back of the sign with Mod Podge spreading that all out inside the frame and then just laying that white shore living burlap on top of it. I'm so glad they got different colors of this. I always love crafting with white burlap, but sometimes it can be kind of hard to find. I used to buy the rolls online at Amazon because it was the only place I could find them. And then I thought we would do a shell display. So I want to display them in rows like you would see like on a display exhibit. Now I'm trying to use just Dollar Tree um, seashells and I'm trying to pick out like different shapes, sizes of seashells to fill it out. I did a pretty good job. Um, I wanted originally nine, but then I decided to tighten it up and do a total of 12. And I think I just had to use maybe a couple, like two seashells from my actual stash from the beach. I wanted a variety, so I think that looks pretty cool. I kind of staggered the ones that are kind of shaped like scallops in and out, so they're not next to each other. And then I'm simply gonna hot glue these all on. I lost a little bit of footage here because my son needed me to help him find his switch and I forgot to hit record again. You know, mom duties and all, <laughs> but basically, Super easy. I just hot glued the middle row down and we're gonna do the same thing here on the top and the bottom. And I think I picked out a pretty good variety of shells. I definitely wanted them to all be different and I wanted them to be different colors as well. I think this turned out so pretty. I think I might display this in my bedroom. I really like it and I love the way that it looks like something like straight out of a museum. Anything with burlap behind it, I'm always a fan. That's how it looks. I'm just gonna burn off any excess little glue strings and it's already got a hanger on it and everything. So this little shore living DIY is complete. See how cute the seashells are? I tried to get ones that were not broken because sometimes they are from the Dollar Tree, but I think they're so pretty. I love this DIY. What do you guys think about this one? And I totally love the contrast of the white burlap behind it with that brown sign behind it. 
Hey guys, I wanted to tell you that I've introduced memberships here at Crafty Beach. For $4.99 a month, you can help support my channel here on YouTube. You're going to get early access to my new videos. I'm working on making those ad-free too with the early access. You're going to get other perks as well, including a shout out. And I have six members now. I want to give a big thank you to the following Crafty Beach bumps. Coastal Couple, I am Mojo Jojo, Karen O'Haran, Leanne, Pamela Bergeron, and Sally Cooper. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. And now it's time for the final reveal. Don't forget to comment your favorite DIY below. And like this video, I'd really appreciate it. It helps the algorithm. And don't forget to subscribe. Road to 20K. so much for watching. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here.